All right, welcome. Today we're going to be talking about files, blobs, array buffers, typed arrays, and data views, and how all these things are interconnected and will allow you to actually do quite a few things. So I did a video recently, links up there, about the file and file list objects. So in that video, I was talking specifically about the file objects that you would get if you had an input type equals file and then you wanted to use that file object. So here we're going to expand that a little bit and talk about how we could actually create files, not just load them through the forms, but actually create our own files. So a blob object, blob stands for binary large object. It's basically just any binary file. And when you create a blob, you need to pass in an array. So you have to have these square brackets and inside of here, this data variable, this represents a whole bunch of things. So you can take another blob, pass it in. You can take a file, which is also a kind of blob. It's like a little, it's a subclass of blob. So you can pass that in. You can pass an array buffer, which is just raw data. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Typed array and data view are sort of interpretations of array buffers. You can take a string and pass that in. So this is an array, so you can do a mixture of all these things. So you can just have an array of a whole bunch of these things put together into a single blob. Then there is an optional parameter here. So options you can pass in, there's two of them, type. So if you want to express a MIME type, if you're building a text file, you can do that or the other option endings has to do with uh, whether or not your binary data that you're reading is this meant to be transparent meaning look for any of the new line characters and just leave them where they are or look at the new line characters that are inside the file and convert them to whatever the native os is so maybe the file was created on windows and now you're opening it up on linux and you need to or want to change the carriage return, new line characters that are being used at the end, you can do that as well with the blob data. Now, generally, when you create a blob, it's just this. You're just going to have blob, you pass in an array with your data, and your data is often just one thing. So you can create this binary large object. So you've got some binary data. New file, same idea. It has an array. Inside the array, you can pass in a blob, an array buffer, typed array, data view, string, or a combination of those things. It also gets a file name property. So this is sort of the big thing that sets it apart from blob. With a file, you're saying, okay, yes, it's binary data, but it is a file. I'm actually making a file. So I'm going to give it a name. I am going to specify a MIME type. And you can also optionally provide a last modified time and date for this file that you're creating. Now, once you have your file or blob, there's a lot of things that you can do. Now, I'm not going to do all of these in this video. I'm going to show one or two, but I will be making more videos to show code snippets. So specifically how you do these different things. So once I have my blob, I can take it and I can upload it. So I can use it with fetch to upload it. When you download using fetch, you are getting a response object. That response object is going to contain a blob. It's going to contain this binary data and you are going to be able to convert it to, okay, it's an image or it's a text file, a JSON file, whatever it is, you'll be able to do that with the one that's in the response object. If you've got a file blob object, you can save it in the cache. So you can use the cache API to actually save a copy of a file in the cache to use later on. So we could conceivably take a file off the person's operating system. They click a button, they pick a file, and then we can save that file in the cache to be used later on. So maybe they want to upload an avatar and keep it on their computer. So you can have the avatar that the user is going to use on the website just in their cache. So it's only visible when they're on their computer. Um, we can add a link to a web page. So an anchor tag set to have the attribute download, and then you give it an href to the blob. So you can point an anchor tag at a blob that you've just created yourself. 
Uh, if it's an image, you can create an image tag and display the image. If it's some sort of text file, you can display the contents on the page. You can parse it if it's HTML, XML, JSON, something like that. You can actually parse it and use it. Or you can take the text contents and save it in local storage or as a cookie. So there's lots that you can do once you have one of these file objects, one of these blob objects. So just a little bit more information here. Uh, array buffers. It is just raw data. So you're never going to be able to create an array buffer and then say, oh, I need to change the length of this. It's going to be fixed in size. When you create it, that's how big it is. There are some methods that you will use in doing various things that will return to you an array buffer. And in my future videos, I will be getting into those. But that aside, if you ever want to edit an array buffer, you have to use a data view to do that. So a data view, it's like a wrapper object around your array buffer that lets you read individual bytes or write individual bytes into there so you can change the contents. And I'm going to show you how to do that in just a minute. And typed array, it's a kind of data view. Uh, it is an array like view so you can sort of loop through. It has all the or a lot of the methods that you're used to with normal arrays. Now it's important to stress that array buffer is not an array. A typed array is not an array, but it is very array like. So it's a series of eight, 16, 32 or 64 bit integers that you have inside of there. You can take an array buffer and pass it to a typed array. So when I'm creating an eight bit typed array, I can pass an array buffer to it I've created a new object, which is a typed array, and it's going to have all that numeric data. All right, so let's do something practical here. I have in my web page here, I've just got a button. I'm going to click on this button to start the whole thing running. And what I want to do inside of here when I click it is I'm going to create an array buffer. I'll create a data view. We'll put some data inside there, and then we'll turn that raw array buffer data into an actual file. And then we'll save it on the person's computer. So here we go. We'll say AB, that's gonna be my array buffer. And I'm gonna say new array buffer. And two is going to be the size. Now this is two bytes. One byte equals eight bits. So that's eight ones and zeros. One byte allows you to create the numbers from 0 to 255 if it's an unsigned, meaning there's no plus or minus sign. So I can have any number like that, and I can have two of them. So I've got two bytes worth of memory inside my array buffer. Now, if I use a data view, I can get to these individual bytes and I can put whatever I want in there. Well, not whatever I want, but I've got two places that I can save a number between 0 and 255. So what's the use of that? We'll see in just a minute. So I'm going to create my data view. We'll say new data view. And the data view wants to know, hey, OK, what are you putting inside of here? What are you trying to view? Well, this array buffer that I just created, this is the thing that I'm trying to view. So by default, array buffer saves everything as individual bytes. So here's eight bits, then eight bits, then eight bits, then eight bits. It's always that size. Data view, I can take that big long string of numbers and say, I want to look at them one byte at a time or two or four or eight bytes at a time. So that's what this bit right here is the eight, 16, 32 or 64 bit. It's how many bytes I want to look at at a time. My data view right here. What I'm going to do is I want to write data. Remember I said I could not change the contents of the array buffer unless I do it through the data view. The data view is how I change that. So I'm going to write in the first position. So we can see byte offset. So what position inside of your data view do you want to change? And by data view, I'm meaning the array buffer that it's pointing at. So position zero. I'm going to put the number 104 
inside there. And then I'll repeat this with the number 105. So there we go. I've got numbers that are stored inside of there. And if we wanted to look at the contents of that, we could. So console.log, I'm going to take right here, I'm creating an unsigned 8-bit array. So this is an array that only holds 8-bit numbers. It's like a data view. And we'll convert that to string just so we can take a look at it. Got an extra one there. And what we're passing into it is our array buffer. So if I take our array buffer that we just edited with the data view, we should see these two numbers. So this is an array of 8-bit numbers. There we go, 105 and 0. Oh, yeah, we didn't put the 1. So I wrote 104, and then I overwrote the 104 with a 105. So I do it now. There we go, 104, 105. So that's the contents of my array buffer that I created. I created an array buffer. I used a data view to write two numbers into that buffer. And then I created a typed array, which looked as well at the array buffer. And there's the contents. Okay, so I have that great, wonderful, not very useful as it is. It's just an array of numbers. I could have created any array and just started sticking numbers inside there as long as I was checking to make sure that each of the values was between 0 and 255. Wouldn't really be a lot of difference. But here, we're going to create a blob and we're going to create a file. So remember, we need those square brackets regardless of how many things we're putting inside of here. And I'm going to put my array buffer inside that. If I console log this one, there we go. I created a blob, size two. This is how many bytes. And type could be a mime type, or I'm allowed to set that. I haven't set it, so the default is an empty string for type. But I did create a blob, and it is the right size. It's got two bytes. And that's because the array buffer right here that we passed in, we declared it to be two bytes long. We can repeat the same thing with a file. We can say new file, square brackets. We have to pass it in as an array. I'm going to pass the array buffer in there. So I'm going to create a new file using the same data. And my file name, I'm going to say myinfo.txt. That's what I'm going to call it. And I'm going to define the type as text slash plain. Now, by doing that, I've given it a name and I've defined the MIME type. This is going to inform the file object how it should be reading this. So it's going to look at these two things and say, OK, you want whatever characters those represent inside of a text file. So UTF plain text, what is the equivalent of this? So we can look at our file object just before we move on here. There we go. There's our blob. And here's the file object. And you can see the file object has the last modified date. Even though I didn't set it, it took the current timestamp for that. Name, size, type. All this extra information is now there. And that's really the difference between a blob and a file. It's the exact same data. It's just fa the file object has stuff in the head. It says, okay, I know what kind of file I am. I know when I was last modified. I'm a file. I'm still blob. I'm still binary data. But here we go. I've got this information. Now, if I wanted to put that on the page, if I wanted to take an anchor tag, put it on my page, have the user click on it so they could download this file that we just created out of raw data here, we can do that. So let's say, let's create a URL. There is a built-in method called create object URL. And this thing will accept a blob or a media source. This is, if you've got a video or an audio tag in your HTML, the different source elements that you have for that, those are media sources. Otherwise blob, well, right here, this is a blob, this is a blob. The file is a kind of blob. 
So I'm going to put that in there. That's going to be my URL. So this is creating a URL that I can use inside of an anchor tag, and it's going to point at this chunk of memory. Wherever this is saved in memory, that's what this is pointing at. It's creating a URL that points to memory on my computer. So we've got that. Let's create our anchor tag. So we've got our URL for our anchor tag, the download property. This can be the file name and it's available here. So this F, this file object back in here, the name property of the file, there's the name. So I'll just use that. We'll say f.name. That is this file's name property, which is right here. So that's what's being used. Um, we're going to put some text inside there too, inside of our anchor tag. And let's just say download f.name. So that's what they'll see once we add it. I'm going to put it inside my main element on the page and we'll append our anchor. Okay, saved. So click me. There we go. There's the raw data. There's the blob. There's the file that we created. I can now download this. And there's my info.txt. And I will save it inside my current project folder. My info.txt. There it is. And if we're back in here, here's my info.txt. Hi. There's our Easter egg. And those two letters right there, the H and the I, that is what we created right here. So this is the H and this is the I, both lowercase. All right. So that is sort of a, a high level view of blobs, files, array buffers, data views, and typed arrays. I have uh, other video. You can see the links here uh, in the cards for my other videos on typed arrays. So you can understand those a little bit deeper. In the meantime, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the bottom. I'm going to have some more videos coming soon for uh, dealing with files and these other things that we can do with them. So I'm going to have a bunch more videos on this stuff coming up in the very near future. As always, thanks for watching.